wants to know what's the best way of taking the oil if you have esophageal cancer. And when she takes it orally, and when she takes anything, she's vomiting occasionally, and she's been taking the oil since January with no effect yet. She's an older woman. Oh, that don't sound good. It, it sounds to me like she doesn't have the right oil. No, she does. It came from our friend in New Brunswick. It did. It, yeah. And it has no, it's had no effect. That's strange. I mean, you know, because I, I, you know, like for esophageal cancer or anything like that, I like to see the people take the oil orally. You know, the, the idea is to get the cancer, to get the oil as close as you can to, to the cancer. Now, and like a lot of people, like if you have prostate cancer or colorectal cancer, the use of suppositories, I think, is better because you're putting the oil right next to the cancer. But this this one here, I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, the gentleman you run through, he has a very high batting average, so I'm not sure what's happening here. Is, is this lady taking a lot of pharmaceuticals or anything? Yeah, well, that, that, see, the pharmaceuticals, the oil, when you're taking the oil along with pharmaceuticals, the oil recognizes the pharmaceuticals as toxins. And what it does is it'll give you a stomach ache, or it can actually make you sick, because the oil wants those toxins out of your body. Now, I, I've had that many times that, that people come to me, I, I'm not a doctor, and I can't tell people to go off their medications. But I always warn them, like if somebody came to me and they were taking 20 pills a day, I always told them, I said, you know, you're probably going to have a reaction when you start using the oil because the oil is going to not want those toxins to be present. And it'll likely give you a stomach ache or something of that nature. Well, a few days later, I get a call back from the same patient, and then they're telling me that, oh, I, you know, I can't take this oil. And I said, why? You know, well, my stomach's bothering me too much. And I said, well, you're still taking the pharmaceuticals then. And then they admit that, yes, they are. And then a couple weeks later, I get a call back. They said, I'm off all the pharmaceuticals, my stomach's fine now, and I'm feeling much better. So, you know, like, the oil and pharmaceuticals really do not mix, because one's a medicine and one isn't. And we both know the one that isn't. Okay. What uh, I do see, Rick, with uh, some of my people, uh, when they first get on oil a couple weeks into it, um, some of them almost go through a de detoxification process. And sometimes nausea will be a part of that, and occasionally vomiting, but it seems to pass. You know, well, vomiting is not highly unusual. I mean, well, if somebody, if you, if you took a big overdose, I mean, you sit down and took a gram of oil or something like that, or a gram and a half on the first dose, it's possible it, it could make you sick, but it's not going to harm you in any way. And that's the reason I'm always telling people, you know, start with the small doses, work your way up, and you literally, you know, I, see, what I always wanted to do, I wanted, if I ever had the oil, ongoing oil supply, I wanted to take a gram a day for a year, and then go back after the year's up, and take two grams a day for the following year, and then three grams for the year after that. And while I was in Europe, uh, when I came back, my son told me, he said, I run a, I run a test myself. And he said, uh, Dad, he said, I can take three grams of oil a day and have it not bother me. And I said, so what did you do? And he said, well, I, I started with a gram. He said, then I went to two. He said, then I went to three. And he said, I was feeling fine. You know, my, I wasn't getting high. My body was handling it. But he said, when I went to four, it gave me diarrhea. So there, there probably is a limit there. But one thing I, I noticed about this oil, when you get on it, yes, you, you'll see a lot of toxins coming out of your body in both your urine and your stool. You'll see these funny colors and things like that. So that, that's not unusual at all. But uh, in a short time, you know, the toxins have left your body. You'll notice that you don't get as much body odor as you used to have because you no longer have the toxins in your body. Uh, another wonderful aspect of it too is when you go to the bathroom. Well, all the effort in going to the toilet is now gone. When you got the oil, you just go to the toilet and it just, it's just almost like breathing. You just sit there and it's over. <laughs> No more screaming. <laughs> so there's there's a lot of wonderful aspects to this medicine. Okay, brother. Was he taking it incrementally uh, or all at once uh, in the dosages? Was he taking it uh, like maybe 200 milligrams a few times a day at first? Or was he taking the gram all at once? No, he, he, when he started, he was taking like a third of a gram per dose three times a day. And then he went up to like two thirds of a gram. 
and then he went up to a full gram every eight hours. But when he tried to take it to the fourth gram, well, that was just a little too much. <laughs> okay, go ahead, brother. I don't agree with you. I hear you talk about a grain of rice, and I hear about a gram, but I really have no idea what does a gram look like. Well, if you go to a drugstore, and you, or if you see Run From The Cure, you'll see those little syringes that I use. Now, most of the ones that I bought, they were like five or six milliliter syringes. You can get them in different <laughs> sizes. But a milliliter and a syringe, or excuse me, a milliliter and a gram are almost the same. A gram is just slightly less, just a, just a hair less. So it's not too hard to tell, you know, just one's more or less the same as the other. Now, when you're looking at these grains of rice, uh, what I did, I, I turned around and I measured. I, I used an eyedropper, and I heated the oil up, and I had a very sensitive scale. So I dripped 25 drops, I think 25 or 26 drops from an eyedropper, and that measured out to be a, about a gram. Now, a grain of rice, the, the short grain dry rice that I talk about, it's only about a quarter of an inch long. Well, it takes about two grains of rice to make a drop. You see, so I'm, what I'm starting people off with is about the equivalent of a half a grain of dry rice. Just a little tiny speck. It would, it would be equal to about a quarter of a drop. And you're taking that in the morning, then the mid-afternoon, and about an hour before you go to bed. And then four days later, increase your dose. Same thing, three times a day. And in a very short time, you'll, you'll work up your tolerance. And other people will not even know that you're taking it. So how many grains of rice is a gram? Approximately. Well, it's like I said, there's about two grains of rice to, to make a drop. So you'd be looking at about 50 grains. But when you're, when you're up to taking a third of a gram per dose, you're actually taking between eight to nine drops at once. But it's like I said, it's not like other medicines. If you overdose on this, you're not going to be harmed. You know, you're not, you're not gonna wake up dead or in a graveyard. So, it's perfectly safe, but I'd like to see, when people are using this medication, I'd like to see them stay in their comfort zone. You know, I encourage them to take it as quickly as possible, but I'd still like to see them stay in their comfort zone with the use of this substance. Okay. It is known that the Hells Angels and other gangsters who produce uh, pot, they lace the marijuana with uh, other drugs. And it's also very expensive. Where do people get the, uh, the marijuana to, in order to make uh, the oil in the first place? Well, so what I've always recommended people do is actually simply grow it yourself. You know, cut out the drug dealers. But I mean, if you have a, a sick or dying loved one and you need the oil right away, you, you, the only choice may be to go to an illegal grower or dealer to buy, you know, to acquire the starting material you need. And usually they don't give it away. <laughs> You know, I, I know back home, when I had to buy it from local growers, it was costing me, on average, about $43 a gram to produce this oil. So, uh, I, you know, like in cases like that, it was, it was usually about $2,400 to buy a full 60-gram treatment. But I wasn't making any money off it. The money was all going to the dealer for the starting material. So, you know, I mean, if you have the time, by all means, grow it. Because you know, most of us just don't have the money to put up like that. But if you're in a pinch and you got someone dying, well, then go to the dealers. And when you go to the dealer, tell them what it's for. Go in and tell them, I want a pound of good, strong indica bud, very sedative, and I need it for a cancer treatment. Now, a lot of dealers aren't good people, but some are. And I knew some of the dealers back home that if a patient went to them, and they felt that Joe down the road had better material, often they would send the patient on, they would just say, look, follow down the road, he has better stuff. And they would send the patient on so they'd have better material. So by all means, tell them, that, tell them what you're going to use it for. Because if they think you're just gonna smoke it, well, they're, not, they're gonna sell you anything. But if, you know, but if your life depends on it, some of these dealers do care enough that they, they will wanna see that you get the right stuff. I think you should run for government. <laughs> yes. I did. <mean, laughs> they didn't want me. <laughs> Can you imagine me in Ottawa? Talk about a bull in a china shop. <laughs> okay. Do you have any experience with Parkinson's patients? Yes. Oh, yes. 
Yeah, Parkinson's. What was the question, please? Parkinson's. I asked if you had any experience with Parkinson's patients. No, we get good response from people with Parkinson's. Anything to do with spasmodic conditions, migraine headaches, cluster headaches, uh, you know, it, it's just endless. You know what I mean? I, I don't call this plant or this oil, I don't call it a cure-all for no good reason. And, and actually, so many people hated that term. Uh, when I was in Europe, they, all people told me, you can't call it a cure-all. And I said, well, what would you call a medicine that you can use in all medical situations? What else could you call it? It's a cure-all. But over there, they looked at it like, they said, well, no, you're saying it's going gonna, it's gonna to give you everlasting life. And I said, this is, I'm not saying that this is an elixir of everlasting life. Although it, it definitely will increase your lifespan, there's no question about that. But finally, we did get it straightened out, and I did get to get along with them. But, but a lot of people didn't like that term. What do you know about clinical trials for, for the oil for different illnesses and, and, the, and the various amounts, and, and in particular, the cannabinoids, if you could talk about cannabinoids? Well, uh, I mean, clinical trials to me, that's mostly just a scam that the FDA and those people use, you know, so they can make lots of money. You know, I, I actually had a fellow ask me there one time, he said, would you do uh, like a, a double blind test or study with the oil? You know, like you give some of the patients placebos and treat some of them with the real oil. And when, it, when I was asked that question, I, I just told him, I said, no. If you put 100 cancer patients in front of me and if I got the oil, I'm going to give every damn patient the oil because I know it works. And the study of the placebo, we already know the placebo isn't going to do any good, so why would anybody in the right mind use that? You know, and again, we are talking about man's oldest known medicine here. We're not talking about something new. Let me rephrase the question. I'm more interested in different illnesses, the results of the oil, uh, 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 and the amounts uh, for, I mean, not all illnesses obviously are the same, so the results are going to be different for each one, right? Uh, can you talk a bit more about cannabinoids? Is, you know, well, I mean, you know, like, like, everybody's different. We all have different healing rates to begin with. So you can't look at somebody and say, you know, you're going to be healed in two weeks and you're going to be healed in four. It doesn't work that way. But the, the cannabinoid contents, you see, the, the problem is right now, with the cannabinoids, like the study I heard in the 1970s, it said THC, the active ingredient in marijuana, has been found to kill cancer cells. But there's, there's dozens, well actually, a friend of mine, Dr. Lemire Hanouch, he just did another count on cannabinoids. And he counted 108 cannabinoids. And he said that they, he, did, he felt there was still more. But as yet, we, you know, they won't let us do the simple research that's required so we can determine, you know, what levels of these cannabinoids are required for different illnesses. You know, I mean, for certain illnesses, you know, a certain level of each different cannabinoid would be the most effective. But if we're not, if we're not allowed to do the research, you know, how can we determine these things? So, you know, what I've been doing is just supplying the oil to people with no matter what you had, just ingest the oil and watch what happens. And we've had so much success that you know, I hope in the near future, though, that that's what I plan to do, is try to do the research and, and nail this medicine down the way it should be. If they, you know, if they'll let me do something in the near future in some of these countries, and I can get a seed bank underway, and I can cross and grow and grow, grow and cross the most medicinal strains on earth, and then in no time we'll be able to determine which strains are the best for what conditions, and we'll be able to determine what cannabinoid levels are the most effective for treating all of these different ailments. Okay, brother. Have you had any experience with uh, fibrous tissue disorders, such as Dupagreen? It makes your hands do this. It, it, it turns your hand into a claw. Because yeah. fibrous tissues, like the tendons and whatnot, all fuse together. Well, I can't say anybody's come at me with that, with that, that kind of question, but I mean, if it's unhealthy, the oil's going to go after it. You know, and, and in reality, like this hand here, my right hand, my right hand should be like this. Because I, I burned it. I had third degree burns in that hand. And I mean, three quarters of it was hanging in gobs. It was just like it, was, it, like it had been deep fried. And you know the damage, you know, from third degree burns, what it does, the scar tissue, and how it affects you. Eleven days later, 
completely healed, just pink skin. And even the hair follicles grew back. Now, why aren't we using this stuff in the burn units? No scarring. And what I see, you know, with, with this hand, it tells me that if you had a child that had gone through a house fire, and say that child had horrible burns to their face, could you regrow their face? I think you can. Don't you? So this is what we need burn units. You know, I mean, you, you get a severe burn, you're going to lay in a burn unit for months, you're going to do skin grafts, all these horrible operations, you're susceptible to all these different infections, when you can heal it in no time. So I think the choice is obvious. That reminds me of what you were saying before about skin condition. Can you hear me? Yep. Um, do you apply it topically? Is that oh, yes. <laughs> Yeah, like, you know, this is another thing. If, if women actually knew what this oil does, it would be legal tomorrow. I'm not kidding you. I'm control. Oh, they have more control than you think. But I, I, years ago, I, one night, uh, I used to mix it with different creams and things like that, you know, for skin conditions. And one night, I took a big jar of Noxzema, and I put about 15 grams of this high-grade oil in, mixed it in with the Noxzema. You know, heated the Noxzema up, mixed it up, it turned the noxema yellow. So I'm sitting there, I go into the bathroom, I wash my face really good, and I come back down and I took a big gob of that and I slapped it on. And of course I sitting there, it took me a half an hour to rub it in because I had so much of it. And I, and I got a little bit in my eyes. It burned a little bit. Well, noxema will burn anyway. But the cannabinoids were in the noxema, so it burned a little bit, but it, it was tolerable. So then I went to bed. They were thinking nothing about it. The next morning, I get up, I get out to the bathroom, and I wash my face, and I'm standing there looking in the mirror, and all the little lumps and bumps, and practically all the, you know, the cracks and crevices were all, practically all gone. But of course, me being a man, I just went, well, that's nice. You know, who cares? So I go over to my neighbor's, and I'm over at my neighbor's place, and as soon as I walked in, his wife was in the other room. And when I walked in, she, you could see the look. She's looking at me. So she did this like four or five times during the next hour. And then finally she walked over to me and she said, Rick, she said, did you have a facelift? <laughs> <laughs> and I told her what I'd done and she got the biggest kick out of it. But she said, Rick, it's so noticeable. So women would love this. And then two days after that, from the, from the stuff that I got in my eyes, the noxine and the oil, now, all through my life, I could never see in the distance. I always had trouble. I was always nearsighted. And it's about 600 yards across the valley, and back at my house, as well as 600 yards to the tree line. Well, I could always see the trees, but I couldn't see the limbs. You know, it was all just kind of a green blur. So about two days after I got this stuff in my eyes, I was over on the damn deck, and I looked across the valley, and all of a sudden I'm looking and I could see the limbs. I mean, I can see better now in the distance than I ever could in my entire life. And I know it's the oil that done it. And another thing I noticed too, when I was getting into my uh, late 40s, I was getting these floaters all the time. You know, these black dots that float around. They're very irritating. It's muscular degeneration, that's what causes it. But once I get on that oil, I haven't had a floater in 12 years. So it's the best thing you can possibly do for your eyes as well. And many patients that came to me to take treatments, they call me up about a month later and they say, I can't see properly. And they go, is the oil causing problems? And I say, well, if I were you, I'd go back to my eye doctor and have him check your eyes. And then they call me back and they say, well, I went to the doctor and now my prescription is too strong. I need weaker glasses. <laughs> so this was pretty common. Okay, brother. You uh, were talking about uh, using the oil as a suppository. Yes. Now, uh, it's important to understand that as the oil cannabinoid goes through your uh, intestinal tract, your digestive system actually makes it much, much stronger by bonding hydrogen to it through the hydrochloric acid in your, in your system. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's so much more effective by eating it, is right. you get much more activated cannabinoids that have much more carrying results in your body. So it has taking it as a suppository, it's very important to take it orally as well. Well, uh, we found the suppositories, like I said, to be very effective. I noticed uh, the first one I took when I was in Europe, because uh, I, you know, I told people to use it for hemorrhoids and all kinds of different conditions. Because I mean, there's nothing better for hemorrhoids. It'll heal, heal hemorrhoids in no time. But the the first uh, 
They made some pretty strong ones over there. Well, it's strong that way anyway. Oh yeah, so yeah. they gave me a suppository and I took it. And Yindra said to me, he said, Rick, he said, watch your breathing. And within 20 minutes, I could see a difference in my breathing. And over in the Czech Republic, Yindra, he made a lot of suppositories. He was passing them out like they were candy. And you know, the first two or three times that I took them, it was kind of rough, you know, you're trying to get it up there. But about the third time, I swear to God, my ass reached out to grab me. <laughs> there's, a great, there's a great number of people in the Czech Republic doing the same. <laughs> what strain of oil would you use for Parkinson? Well, see, again, the strains, there's always a problem here. If you go to, if you're going to a seed supplier, it's best to go out and read the different, the different strains they have you know, available. And a lot of the time they'll tell you the some of the medical qualities of that strain. But you see, I mean, the strain that I grew here uh, back in Nova Scotia for years, uh, White Widow. I, was, I loved uh, that strain because it was very sedative and it was also the best painkiller I ever seen. That stuff would kill pain that morphine wouldn't even touch. But if you go to the different seed companies and you order White Widow, they you say if you ordered it from five different companies and you got the seeds back, and you grew those seeds, you find that you have five different varieties of cannabis. See, there's no stability. And this is what makes it very hard. And, you know, with the government standing in the way of doing the simple research that's required, it's, you know, it's really kind of like a, you know, like groping in the dark. But still, like I said, the medicine has a terrific batting average. So I would say check the seeds before you buy them and see if you can find the proper seed for your condition. I much prefer the Indica strains because they're, they're, they're very sedative and they make you sleep and rest. And sleep and rest are a very important part, part of the healing process. The, the sativas are so energizing. Some of the sativa varieties, if you took an oil from a sativa, you would prob it would probably scare you. It, it just like makes you bounce off the walls. You're so energized, you just can't stop. And uh, I had a man years ago who came to me, he was, he was dying, they only gave him two weeks to live, he was dying with cancer. He had a colostomy on, and I gave him some oil, and well, the, what about three weeks or a month later, he came back to the house. He didn't die, he was, <laughs> the doctor said he was gonna be dead in two weeks, but he didn't die. But he brought me two plants. And when he did, I looked at the plants, and I thought, hmm, they, didn't, they didn't look like they were indicas. But anyway, when he brought the plants, I, I took them and dried them and I made the material, or I made the oil. And we only got about 12 grams of oil. So he came down and I tried, I tried a little bit of the oil myself and it was energizing. So when he came to the house, I told him, I said, this is not the right type of oil. And he said, well, does this have the cannabinoids in it, the THC and all of that? And I said, well, yes, it does. But I said, it's going to have the wrong effect. But anyway, he wouldn't listen. So he takes the 12 grams of oil and he goes home. Now four days later, his wife calls me on the phone and she said, Rich is in my, my husband is in the hospital in Amherst. And I said, well, what do you mean, what, what happened? And she said, he went out and he was trying to build a fence. Now this is a, a guy that's dying of terminal cancer. He's out there trying to build a fence. He gets the colostomy caught up in the fence and he rips it right out of himself. So I said, that's it, no more Stevens. Now, if you, if you have a skin condition or skin cancer, sativa would probably work just fine. But for internal use, I avoid the sativas. If, if you're using it topically, and it, it absorbs into the system? It, it will absorb into the system so, somewhat. Do you feel kind of, like, no, uh, do you feel spacey and all that kind of stuff? No, I, I mean, I, I've, I've had my body covered in it. <laughs> I should never get high that way. But I, I have had two patients over the years, there was two different patients that I put the oil on their bodies and they said that they could feel its effects. But that's only two out of over 5,000. But how much did you use? Well, uh, one gentleman is back, he had quite a big ugly thing on his back, so I used quite a bit of oil. But it's like I said, most people don't feel the effects from just having it on their skin. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Do you still use it on your face? <laughs> I know I should. <laughs> no, I, you know, it's funny because when you came in tonight, I was just looking and going, man, I'd do anything to have his complexion. <laughs> like, you just look very radiant.
Yeah. Well, and and your, your skin it, looks nice, like it's got, the oil, it's got your oils back or something. Well, when I was in my late 40s, like I, I, went, I went about 190 pounds. I was pretty <laughs> blocky, heavy, you know, and, and I used, when I was young, I used to swim a lot and things like that, so I had heavy stomach muscles. But of course, they were covered in about four inch layer of fat. But, you know, it, when I got on that oil, it just brought me back, and, and within a month and a half, two months, I was right back to 160 pounds. And, if, well, if you look at my stomach muscles today, uh, I haven't done a push up in 20 years. This is what the oil does. And it, I mean, walking around with a spare tire or being overweight, it, it's a monkey on your back. You know, it's much better to be the right weight for your size. You're going to feel better, you're going to live longer. So, best way to lose weight. Another, another question? When you, when you start taking it and you're starting to feel like that, the spacey sensations and stuff, <coughs> one of the things that would concern me is like feeling like you're impaired to drive because you maybe your, your reflexes were not very good on the road, you know, or in an emergency right. situation. Right. So did you stay off the road? Do you have people drive you around? Yes, uh, this is what I tell people in the beginning. For the first two or three weeks, while your body's building up a tolerance for it, don't drive your cars. But in reality, there is no impairment to this. Because back in the 1980s, I mean, I never smoked pot until I was about 35 years old. And about that time, I went out and I bought a great big Honda V65 Magna. 120 horsepower, V4, would go like the wind. And of course, I was just idiot enough to drive it that way. But anyway, I, about that time, I started smoking cannabis. And I drove that by tens of thousands of miles under the influence of hashish and cannabis both. I didn't have any oil in those days. But I drove that by tens of thousands of miles. Never had an accident, was never stopped by the police, never had a problem. I got on that same bike one night, after I drank five beer, mm -hmm. I almost killed myself in my own driveway. That's the meaning of impaired. When your motor skills are impaired, nothing will show you more quickly than a motorcycle. So your reflexes are still good? Yes, yes. People can't even tell that I'm taking it. You know, I've even gone and, and boxed with guys, and like, you know, I used to teach some guys boxing and stuff. I've even gone out right full of that oil, boxing, and your reflexes are right there. There's no, so you can you make know, very rapid Decisions, no problem. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I mean, I, I've been eating the oil for 12 years. Yeah. You see anything wrong with my thinking processes? Nope. Matter of fact, I had a big dose last night. Now, I hope to have one tonight. Yeah. <laughs> it's good for you, dear. <clears throat> okay. This is, uh, this is from the internet, uh, from Ray. Do the doctors say that a tincture is just as effective as RSO? Is that right? because they want to make a profit? Well, actually, I recommend tinctures in many cases. Like, see, I've treated a lot of people with uh, conditions like psoriasis. Now, some people, their bodies are just covered in psoriasis. Now, if you had to cover that patient with oil, you'd have to have five or six ounces or more just to get them covered. So what I used to do, I'd go and I'd take uh, like rubbing alcohol, 99% isopropyl. I would get a little bottle and I would fill it about 20% full with, you know, with the oil. And then I would add warm alcohol to it and then shake it. And then when you take the eyedropper out of it, like one drop will spread out to about the size of a loomy. And within about 30 or 40 seconds, the alcohol evaporates off and it's almost dry to the touch. So if you're gonna cover like a big area on somebody's body, the tinctures are, are very good for that because it will save you a lot of money. But I always like to use the raw oil if possible. I mean, I've treated people with bad, bad psoriasis. Uh, one woman, she'd had it all her life, and she had one real major spot right here. She had many others, but she told me, she said, this spot would never heal. And I went to her house, I put the oil directly on it, put a bandage on, I went back four days later, and when I peeled the bandage off, there was just, the whole thing was healed, except there was one, like a little dimple in the middle. And so I, I put some more oil on it. Four days later when I came in and took the bandage off, it was completely healed. You'd never know that she ever had psoriasis. Did it come back? Well, it, you see, psoriasis comes from within. Yeah. It's in your T cells. So you, the best way to, you can, in some cases, I've treated quite a few people with psoriasis and things on their elbows, 
just topically, and it didn't come back. But if you've got a bad dose of psoriasis, you literally have to eat the oil and treat it from within. Hey, Rick, I, I would like to ask a question that probably everyone in here would like to ask. Uh, access, because I'm sure that a lot of these people aren't interested in growing their own marijuana, going through the process of making their own oil. A lot of people don't have the wherewithal, the time, the knowledge, a lot of those things. I'm wondering if there is access to this product, your product, that is available out there. Well, no, there's not. I mean, there, there's many people, there's thousands of people all over the world supplying the oil. But, I mean, I really don't have any idea what quality the oil is that they're supplying. Right. And I can't, I mean, with the restrictions they put against me, I mean, every time I try to grow a plant, the RCMP comes and takes it. Right. So there's no possible way that I can supply it at the present time. So, so essentially then, uh, what I'm getting then is, is that people that have an ailment would have to, the best way for them to do it would be not to seek out a local dealer as they've probably never been exposed to a local dealer before, but to get a medical marijuana card so that gives them the right to grow legally through a physician because that's what we have in place today. Would that not be correct? That's it. Well, right here. That's it. We've already got all the uh, uh, cancel permits online. I, I handle 30 permits myself, and we've already got the cancellation dates on them. Uh, they're not being renewed. Right. Uh, the latest one I have is June 12th of this year, but I've heard there's uh, some being issued up to November. Right. But as far as that, there's there's uh, no more avenue for uh, for production or own production at this point. The government's right. taking it into itself and probably going to sell the rights to big pharma. Right, because I mean, and, uh, obviously, as a, a, a you know a normal Joe, I will call them, uh, they're not going to have the wherewithal to know how to gain access to marijuana. They're not, they're, they're I, I don't have a medical license, and I know how to gain access to it. I mean, we all know people that use cannabis, don't we? If you don't use it yourself, just ask your friends and do. They'll tell, they'll tell you where the dealers are. They'll probably take you there and introduce you. You know, it's not that big a deal, but, you know, like I said, with the government's doing what they're doing, and President, you know, it's really, you're, you are buying a pig and a poke. You know, because you, you really don't know the quality of what the oil's you know, that these people are producing, you have no idea what the quality is. Well, that stuff the government produced was garbage. It was actually oh, yeah. the plants ground up, it was stock and all, everything. Trash, yeah. first class trash. And it, I, I said that right along too, you know, and who the hell are the drug dealers here? Now, even back home in Nova Scotia, the best, I could go buy a pound of the best medicinal bud down there for $2,400. The Canadian government, and I know you can buy it a lot cheaper than that here. The Canadian government, when they were selling it, it was $150 an ounce, plus tax. It was all, like you said, full of sticks and garbage. They tested out to be trash. And so they were selling their, their wonderful medicine, you know, because they're so compassionate about the Canadian people. They were selling theirs for $172.50, over $2,700 a pound. That's how much compassion the Canadian government has for medicinal users. So like I said, if I could buy it from a, 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 an underground dealer, Cheaper than I can buy it from my own government. Who's the Who's the drug dealer? Yeah. I think the yeah. I'm about the doctor now. Yeah. So um, I have a colleague who's been using oil, using your method with great results with a lot of cancer patients. So bless right. you for that. Right. And he's uh, he's come up with an issue with leukemia patients, particularly tuberculosis syndrome. Mm -hmm. Their uric acid goes up, the calcium goes up, they get quite ill. Right. Have you seen this with leukemia or any cancer? Well, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm never there usually <laughs> to treat them directly. I don't think they'll even let me in a hospital. But I, I will, well, the main thing I've heard of leukemia patients, uh, you know, normally when they get on the oil, their white blood cell count will start coming down very rapidly. And uh, they've had, I know we've, we've had wonderful results. Uh, I, actually, I like treating uh, leukemia and lung cancer patients the best because you, you see the results. You know, somebody with lung cancer, 
within, you know, usually almost every day, you can see the improvement. They can walk for the, the breathing easier. It makes a huge difference. But it's like I said, you know, I've never really been in a position to do the research the way I would like to do it. But I'm hoping in the future that maybe I can. And, uh, and by the way, Doctor, I really appreciate that book. <laughs> I'm looking forward to reading that. The next edition has a chapter on cannabis, I swear. Okay, brother. A good doctor. Oh, of course. I mean, you know, I, I mean, if, 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 they, if they sent me a license tomorrow, if the government sent me a license, I would send it right back to them and tell them to shove it where the sun don't shine. They have no right to demand a license from us to grow a God-given plant. Yeah. And if you've got someone sick or dying, as far as I'm concerned, to hell with getting permission from the government. Save your loved one. Right. You don't need government permission to do that. They're all bad guys. Would you be willing to name some names of the people that you've talked to? Because too often do politicians just pretend like they've never heard this before. And if we've got names of politicians that have been talked to before, and we can follow up and follow up and start shattering the illusion that these are the saviors and the heroes, right. and that they're all the problem, they're all the liars. It's not that the NDP is going to save us through the Green Party right. or the Conservative. It's they're all evil. Well, I mean, like I said, I went to all the parties. I went to two ministers of health, two federal ministers of health, uh, Anne McClellan and Yulal Assange. I went to both of them. Uh, Yulal Assange was good enough that six months later, he wrote me back a letter telling me I was breaking the law. And he's a minister of health, and I'm telling him how to cure cancer, and then he writes me a letter telling me I'm breaking the law. Seems to me that Mr. Assange wasn't doing his job. And all the local politicians, and I ran, I ran in two federal elections, I can't remember, Bill Casey, uh, I can't remember, there was another, Sagan, I can't remember all their names now. Um, our local MLA at home, uh, Murray Scott, I went to him. We went to local MLAs in Amherst, uh, Ernie Fage, uh, I can't think, we, we went to so many of them, you know. I mean, when you're running in politics yourself, you know, I mean, you're openly speaking about this in a big way, but, but like I said, nobody would react, nobody would do a thing. What about Justin Trudeau? I, I think <laughs> Justin Trudeau is not much different than his old man was. Uh, I mean, he's singing that song right now, oh, we are going to legalize it, and, you know, whoopee for me. Well, that's the same thing that Obama did down in the States to get elected. And I, and I think that's the same thing that Justin Trudeau is doing right now. It's just to get himself to, to become the new prime minister. But I, I don't agree, you know, with any regulation or taxation from the government. Nice. And, you know, when I see, like, you know, I understand what Sensible BC here is trying to do, but I honestly think that it'll come back to bite them in the ass. Because if the government ever gets their taxation in place against this plan, how are you going to get them away from it? No, so that's good. no taxation, no regulation, complete legalization. The same as it was before they put these absurd laws in place. That's what we need. If I could just continue just for a second. Um, I want to point out that I invited personally all of the local politicians, both MLAs and MPs, uh, Elizabeth May, Marie Rankin, um, Randall Garrison, all of the MLAs, um, Maureen Karagiannis, uh, all of them. And are any of them here tonight? Is there like, any I would MP like to or point MLA? Out that the, um, that I did go to Elizabeth May's office and she did sign the Sensible BC banner. Um, and I didn't have a, what an effort. a poster, but mm -hmm. you know, I gave her the poster. I didn't have a advanced details, but she would have put it up in her office um, if I would have had it there. So she does, she definitely does support it. And as far as our BC MLAs, um, there are a few that do support it. So, uh, Elizabeth May does not support this, I can tell you that as a fact. She doesn't. In 2008, the Green Party wanted me to run for them, and I was contacted by Elizabeth May. 
And I wrote back in, and because, you know, I told her, I said, well, obviously you know what I'm doing. And this cannot wait to be an, an election issue. Do something about it now. You know, you're the Green Party, start making a noise. I get a letter back from Elizabeth May. Uh, we're the only party that wants to legalize this and regulate it. Well, she's not singing my song. So I didn't run for the Green Party, and I have no use for the Green Party, or any other political party for that matter. Yes, wonderful results. Uh, we had a gentleman in his 80s uh, down in California. Uh, he was uh, actually he was like to sell real estate, and then he got Alzheimer's, and his daughter got him on the oil. Within three weeks, he was out selling he was out selling real estate again. And we had another lady just recently in England. She had Alzheimer's for 12 years, and she didn't know anybody during that period of time. So they they got her on the oil. And she came back, she come, but she was all shocked because now, you know, the kids that were small had grown up, you know, it was just like being reborn again for her. But uh, yes, we, it is, it's a wonderful treatment for Alzheimer's, dear. Hi, I'm myself. Uh, is there a reason why, Rick, you haven't been documenting this? Because these really are remarkable stories. And you know, the way science and the establishment works is, you're right, I mean, we don't, you know, we want it to be legalized. Mm -hmm. But documentation of this is critical. Is that why you're going well, to Europe? Well, I did the documentation. Years ago, I was going around with video cameras, <coughs> video the patients. Right. The RCMP stole my videos. They stole a lot of my documentation. And I didn't keep, see, what I was doing was illegal. So if I kept the people's names and addresses, the RCMP come in, what are they going to do? They're going to go harass the patients. That's right. So uh, I had my hands tied. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, dear. Hi, you, you were just, you talked just briefly a second ago about um, taxation and, and the government and not, you know, central government. Uh, yeah. yeah, which is starting right now. Um, Uh, I, had, I had two comments. One, the difference I find with, with government is that our government has, uh, has <coughs> chosen for us our medicinal things, which is pharmaceuticals, our rec recreational things, which is, which is alcohol. For me, that does not work on either, on either way. Mm -hmm. It just does not work. It doesn't work for me on my tax, and it doesn't, and it doesn't work for me on a personal level at all. Right. Either one of them. Um, I see Canada, and I see both of those as being quite different in the sense that they are, um, they're not compassionate. Canada's <coughs> culture to me is very compassionate, and I'll give you an example of that. I have a brother that's dying of brain cancer, and he writes a blog after he's done the blog. He used to work for, I don't know, politics, and BC politics for a long time, and he writes a blog. And um, he recently mentioned cannabis oil in his blog, and I was like, whoa, that was quite a bit of surprise, but he did. So that gave me license to say, hey, you know what? I need to say something about cannabis oil. I got my brother cannabis oil because it took so freaking long to get his card. Yeah. If you read his blog, you, I mean, he wrote a, an article called Pain. It just, it's, it's mind blowing. It's just mind blowing. So I got him oil. You bet. You bet. I got him oil and I took it over to him. And I blogged. Because I know the person on the recent blog. All the politicians know. You bet they know. Their industries are not compassionate. Cannabis culture is compassionate. What I got my brother in like a day or two, a few phone calls, it's not that hard. You know, it's not that hard. It's right. easy. You know, everybody has friends, everybody smokes it. In the legislature, they're doing quite well on it. Yeah. yeah. Well, with all the information that's out there right now on the so internet, how could governments not know? That we're not looking at the issues here. What is costing us money in this province? It's not cannabis. It is the pharmaceutical deaths and whatever, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. It is the alcohol, whatever, 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 whether you want to look at it. I mean, let's <coughs> look at it just from a logical, can we remove the emotions from it? Because I'd like my tax dollars to go somewhere that's a little bit more important. <laughs> and secondly, just secondly, I've had two back operations from an old school accident, really old. So 
I'm missing a disc in my back. You know, mm -hmm. completely. So it's vulnerable and it's a lot of inflammation. I landscape for a living. I'm almost 50. Yeah, and I'm female. Menopausal, we lose a lot of our bone density anyways. This is a big problem for, you know, especially if you're bone on bone. So I went the surgical route. God bless them, they fixed my back. And the pharmaceutical route, it doesn't work for clients. You know, it wouldn't work for me. I wouldn't be working if I went the route. I also chose massage, years of it. Broke down about four pounds of scar tissue in me, the fellow did. He's really phenomenal. He's in Victoria. Unbelievable, man. I mean, unbelievable. All throughout. I can bend and touch my nose to my knees. If I did not follow my brain and what my stomach was telling me, good Lord, it was ready to blow up and all the other pills and muscle relaxant. I directly wrote a surgeon and said, I am taking this many milligrams. My God, fix my back. I know my stomach is going to blow up. To get to a surgeon. Can I ask how your brother is? My brother has about probably about eight to, he says two months. He's had it for about 10 years. He was Carol James's last um, chief of staff. Um, and that wasn't what I came here to talk about. But boy, it pisses me off how freaking stupid we are in this country. In this country, how brainwashed we've gone from 1930s and we've just kept the same mindset. We're super intelligent people. One Google, endocannabinoid. You know, yeah, but they, they won't so listen to you. That's it. That's my end of my spill. Sorry, that's a little bit. Uh, one of the politicians that I went to uh, was Jack Layton back in 2003. I contacted Jack Layton with the NDP. Absolutely. He should have been taking oil. <laughs> and I sent the case for him. I told him all about this. I told him how to cure cancer. And I'm here to see other year. He dies from one of the easiest cancers there is to cure, prostate cancer. As a matter of fact, prostate cancer really isn't even that deadly until you get it treated. Then it gets deadly. But what did Mr. Layton do? Well, Mr. Layton died of ignorance. That's what he died of. He should still be with us. If he had to listen to me, he would have been. You just had mentioned Europe. I, I wonder what you're excited about and what prospects you have going on in terms of moving forward. Well, I'm, I'm interested in Kosovo, Uruguay, Ecuador, and possibly French Polynesia. Because like French Polynesia, they had all that uh, nuclear testing done in the 60s and they have a lot of problems there. South America, the doors are much more open there. They're kicking out the genetically modified food and the central bankers. They're actually making sense down there. And in Kosovo, they're having an election in October. And I was contacted here about six months ago um, he contacted one of my supporters, but he's a politician in Kosovo, and one of his family members was dying from cancer. So they put the member, family member on the oil, and it saved their life. So he told my, uh, the, he told my associate in Europe, he said, if I get elected in, in, in October, he said, I want Rick Simpson in Kosovo. So from what I understand, uh, it looks as though he's going to get elected. So it might be a wide open door for me because I mean I need to be able to go in and grow thousands of plants, you know, do it on a big scale, and then supply the seeds to governments. Let governments grow the plants for their people, you know, and and, and, and supply their doctors and everything, because we, we could be saving so many more. I think patients, and I'm, I think maybe you would agree with this, doctor. You know, I I mean when people come to me, it's all about how fast we can get the oil into them, but now. Where, where the oil is not deadly, and nobody's going to die from it, if you could take that patient and put them in a hospital environment, give them enough oil to put them right in a coma, and keep them that way, it would give the patient a much better chance to survive. Now, would you agree with me? Yeah. yeah. Just, just one comment. My colleague has shown in many, many cases, and I've been writing up some of these cases to publish them, that uh, the government uh, plant, the MS-17, uh, mm -hmm. is a GMO product from their AG, Germany, yeah. and it's absolutely useless for cancer. And I don't know if it was designed that way, but I can assure you it is. Right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, there's so many of these things that we have to get rid of, you know, the genetic modification, you know, the camel trails. There's so much happening around us, and we can see it with our own eyes. And these people have no right to be doing this to us, you know? So, I, you know, again, it's up to us to bring a stop to it. Yes, Dad? Hi, Kevin.
again, I'd really like to thank you for um, coming to BC and touring uh, BC and, and filling us all in on this fabulous uh, healing product. But I, I really more have more of a comment than a question. First off, two comments. Act like it's legal. Act yeah. like we, yeah. we, we can grow it in our backyard. Start acting that way. Right. Okay, yeah. secondly, <laughs> I just would just like to say that I've been detoxing using naturopathic uh, type things for the past over a year and a half. So I've gone through a lot of Herkheimer reactions. Well, two days ago, I, I, I considered myself pretty healthy by now. Well, I guess I wasn't. I did take a small, very small dose of, of the oil. <coughs> And I had another Herxheimer reaction. Well, <laughs> yes, you did, I did feel sick. It took uh, 12 hours before I was sick, actually, but I, had a, I did have trouble sleeping. I don't know why, but my heart was racing, and, and I felt a lot of action in my body. I didn't know what it was, and I actually, actually closed my eyes, and I could see things as well, bright colors. So it was a, kind of a trippy thing as well. <laughs> But I did feel it took about 36 hours before it actually came out of my system and I didn't feel high. But once I puked, pardon me, I yeah. puked the next day. I felt great. It, it took about an hour and I felt really good. So even if you think that you're healthy, you probably got toxins in you. I know I didn't think I had toxins. It was a naturopath who saw all these pathogens and heavy metals. So that's what I've been right. detoxing. And that's from all the stuff. The, G the years of eating GMO foods, mm -hmm. the years of breathing in the toxins in the air, that was, oh, that was what was in my body. Thank you so much, Rick. You're more than welcome here. Thank you, Debbie. Mm -hmm. Okay, Rick. Yeah, hi, Rick. Um, I have got a license. I've been growing uh, marijuana for quite a few years now. Uh, 44 plants. I can carry eight ounces of pot around if I want. And I can give away pot if I want. And what I've been doing for the last uh, couple of years living in an apartment is I've been saving all my materials and I've made up some uh, samples of some oil. And if anybody would like to try a sample, I'd be happy to get you one. And you can contact me through the Sensible BC website. I mean, juicing may have some benefits, I, I won't deny that. But again, you know, cannabis is a plant that detoxifies the soil it's planted in. So those toxins are pulled up into the plant. And also, cannabis is rather famous for having mold in it. So if you're juicing, you're probably taking that mold into your body as well. And the other problem with juicing is that there's no heat in the process. You know, the juicing process does not have heat. So the oil, or the cannabinoids are never rotated, the, the molecules are never rotated to the delta-9 position, which makes them less medicinally active. So that's the main problems I have with juicing. But I mean, I, I have heard that people have had pretty good results with it, but I'll stick to the pure oil. That's the stuff I like. Folks, we're not done yet, please. Please respect Rick's uh, ability. Oh, she has been out already. <laughs> Oh, that's wonderful. Okay. Um, so you've been talking a lot about healing people, and you just mentioned that um, they can heal the earth. Do you have any experiences with people preparing toxic landscapes, like old gas stations or anything with cannabis? No, uh, you know, I mean, but I, we all know what the what this plant can do. So any place where we have nuclear accidents or old service stations or anything like that, if you want to detoxify the soil, this is the plant to use. And actually, I, and from what I understand, where this plant can grow in such harsh environments, you could actually even reclaim deserts with this plant. If you took, it would take some time, but I believe you could. You know, the, the uses are endless. You know, we, it's like I said, there's over 50,000 different things that can be made from this plant. Anything that could be produced from petroleum can also be produced from the cannabis hemp plant, but in an earth-friendly way. We could get our plastics from hemp, we, you know, instead of having all these toxins in our environment. Well, like I said, why don't we work with Mother Earth? It's not that hard. Oh. Okay, next question. Okay, 
was. Hey, I'll be back having him first. Okay. Yeah, well, seeing as you know, it's funny to convince your loved ones to drink it that don't agree with you. Well, that's the hard part. I mean, uh, I, I see this all the time in families. Like half the family will want the patient to take it, the other half don't. And, you know, what I've always told people, look, I, I mean, I'm just the messenger. I, I leave the horse to water. Proof's in the pudding. But it's up to the horse whether they're going to drink or not. And it's, it's a sad thing, but in so many cases, people are so badly brainwashed, they just cannot accept new information. But you know, when you but when you go back, if you're talking to a, a family member who's dying of cancer, you tell them, say, look, do you not know what the word carcinogenic means? You know, stay away from these treatments. They're going to kill you. Oh, you know, use something rational and, and, and show them the clips and the testimonials. So there's a new documentary just about uh, let's see, July 22nd, called Cannabis Rising: The Key in the Lock. Now it's two solid hours. They they glorified me in it. But the best part of it is that they, they put patient after patient after patient on there. And when you watch that, it's pretty damn compelling. You know, because it, it, it is all true. And there's also another documentary called The Marketing of Madness. And it's about three hours long, and it's actually doctors explaining what the medical industry is all about. And I'm telling you right now, if you watch The Marketing of Madness, you'll probably never want to take another pill. So oh, it's worth watching. We know um, our time, the time is now uh, 10 after, so we do want to continue on this. I have, um, have some paper here. Uh, so questions, I'm going to circulate this around so you can write down the questions. Um, then we can uh, try to get them addressed at the uh, future event. Um, so I think, would that help? I can write down some questions and then well, uh, you know, the questions, like every event, there's different questions, but uh, I just had one here that says, have you, have you treated people with MS? Yeah. Yes, we have, and very successfully. It's a wonderful treatment for MS. HIV. Well, melanoma, that's just another type of cancer. We've treated all types of cancer very successfully, so. And then we have this one who has their arm stretch. Yeah, I've actually, I was curious, something you said earlier, I've actually been, uh, well, I own a company called Modern Irrigation. I'm based in Souk. I've been designing and installing grow systems for people for uh, uh, almost 20 years now. Um, what, uh, the problem for what I'm doing is, of course, the, uh, the recrimination from the, uh, the legal system. I've been raided many, many, many times. Mm -hmm. I've been arrested many times. I've uh, only been charged or uh, convicted once out of 13, so I've been pretty lucky. But uh, I know you've gone through a lot of the similar things. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just, I uh, want to make sure everybody knows I'll give my cards out here. I've, I've got lots of insight into actually making it, producing it, uh, yes, logistics on sales, all these different avenues that are all available. All you need is a little information. I'll hand my card out after we're done here and uh, I've got a lot of logistics support on the island here. So Good. I wanted to ask you, were you charged when your still was taken? Oh yes, I was charged with uh, cultivation, possession, and trafficking. Were you convicted? Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, of course I was convicted. The Crown Prosecutor went in and tampered with the jury to make sure that I was. But you're able to Great country to candidate, you know. You're able to use a passport to leave the country, even with that oh, yes, conviction. Absolutely. Yes, yes. I can't, I can't enter the U.S., but I can go to most other, and most any other country. <laughs> no great loss. Well, I, I always tell people that, you know, the, the oil will not interact well with the pharmaceuticals. Okay. So, in reality, I mean, I've, I've had a lot of people that come to me and they were taking 24 to 30 pills a day. And like I said, I'm not a doctor and I can't tell people to go off medications, but the, like, it wasn't unusual, like people 30 days later would call me up, they were off all of their medications, some of them even went off heart medications, and they're still doing fine. The oil took the place of all those medications. And that's a lot of, that's another reason the pharmaceutical industry is so afraid of this. Because this medicine can replace all that trash that they're selling us. The question I had was can you take both of them together? Well, if you do, you're going to have interactions. And that's, that's not a good thing. I was speaking to you. Yes, I'm not here. I just want to know because uh, my partner has melanoma. Yes. And it's spreading and it's into the lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. Right. We did that for months. I got some oil from somebody growing it or making the oil. Right. I don't know. I hope it is the right oil. 
They told me somebody who knew it or was pure. Yeah. Uh, he's been taking it, but this growth is still growing. So we're here this week because we were at the cancer research. We were supposed to be in this study, which all of a sudden the tissue didn't make it. So now we're out of the study. Right. Fine with us. But right now, what's the concern is that this thing is still growing after taking the oil, but I don't know if it's the right oil and how much he's taking. Maybe it's not enough in his, in his body to do uh, Well, so like you said, the, the dosage instructions are right up there on our website, but. If you have a concern about the oil, I would try making an oil out of, out of a different strain. You know, I'm, I don't know the strain, and I don't know, I mean, to make the oil myself. Right. Talk to this guy here. He, he'll help you. Yeah. 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 I'll be right back. Yeah, there's some people right here in this room that might be able to help you with, 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 with your problems. Okay. May I have to very quickly ask you, uh, what effects does it have on things like low thyroid, hyperthyroid, Addison's disease? So, the real huge hormonal deficiency problems or defunct glandular problems? Well, it's a great balance, sir. You know does what it, I mean? Does, yeah, but does it help Here. the glands to produce again? Well, yes, there's a good possibility of that. I've, I've seen women that were entering menopause get on the oil, <coughs> and the menopause stopped. Hmm. You know, so it, 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 like when you're, like your endocannabinoid system is the great regulator, and when you're taking that oil into your body, your endocannabinoid system is regulating your immune system and all other systems in your body. So it's going to keep you as healthy and your hormones balanced as, as good as it possibly can be. That's the best I can tell you. Last question. Yeah. Um, Rick, you mentioned a little bit earlier about uh, <coughs> organ transplant recipients. Mm -hmm. And what about um, anti-rejection drugs and people who have gone down that path? Well, and I, and we just actually here, just, uh, just a few months ago, we got a report from a guy, and he had an organ transplant, and he stated that he doesn't need to use his anti-rejection drugs anymore because he's using the oil. So, I mean, I think we still need to study this a bit more, but it does look promising. Okay. So we do have to uh, watch our time. Okay, I, I guess they're going to kick us out, so we have to leave. But, so but I hope some of you can come down to Jim Hortons, and we can all sit down and have a coffee. Thank you very much for everyone. I guess Corey Young is going to come back up. She has a few more things to say. Well, first of all, Rick, um, I have about 100 people that I'm supposed to give hugs to you from, so that's what I'm going to be doing for the next hour or so. So anybody else that wants to talk to you, we'll have to wait. <laughs> um, on behalf of everybody here, um, a huge thank you to you for coming and talking to us. And it's great to finally meet you after all this time. And uh, I think the knowledge that Rick imparts is so important. If we all share it even with one person, uh, tell people if you never know whose life you're saving, folks. Thank you, Rick, so much.